Hey guys, what's up? It's Connor Mitchell, head wizard of Dragon Rider Network, and this past Monday was WWDC 2013 when Apple unveiled some new MacBook Airs, their brand new iOS 7, and their brand new macOS operating system called Mavericks. Now, doing an overview of all that technology would be pretty awesome, but we did one step better. We got ourselves a hands on developer preview of macOS 10 Mavericks, and we got to try it out. So, anyway, let's get into it. So of course Craig Federici was there to introduce the new Mac OS X Mavericks and obviously kid around that they had run out of names so they had to go with their new California brands which for me I am all in favor of. Mac OS X Mavericks obviously built on to some new things such as apps but it also really did some internal upgrades as well. So anyway, let's get into it. One of the first new advances that they came up with is Finder Tabs. Basically how you would have tabs in Safari, you now have tabs in Finders. This can take a huge clutter of Finder windows as I have had many times before and will shrink it down into a very manageable window a single window where you can actually have all of your tabs in one place and easily switch between them when you need to. The Finder also now goes full screen which is a huge benefit if you need some more space on your desktop or want to switch in between spaces and have a Finder area all to its own. Something that Mavericks is definitely going to cater to for their power users is the ability to take advantage of multiple displays. Now before when you would have a display you would typically only have a canvas that would really only be a place where you could put windows, not anymore. Now a secondary display can have a menu bar and it can also take over the dock when you need it to. So that's a huge advantage. Another thing Mavericks can do with multiple displays is you can actually have full screen apps in multiple displays which actually includes mission control so that way you can have two different mission controls with multiple full screen displays which can be incredibly helpful to productivity. And of course you can not only mirror your content to Apple TV using AirPlay but you can also use it as a secondary display as you would for any other display which is a huge huge advantage. Another cue that we saw Mac OS X Mavericks take from iOS is definitely the use of push notifications. Now we already had push notifications but this actually allows you to receive the same push notifications that you would on your iPhone. So basically you can just go in, subscribe to the push notifications there and get them to your Mac and it can become very helpful. Say news, weather, stocks, any kind of games that you're playing, apps, more news, games, news, D did I say news already? Calendar has been completely revamped. The leather is gone, the stitching is gone, and it is now a flat design, which all of us have really been hoping for. The new Mac OS X Mavericks calendar is really, really nice. It's been really cleaned up with its white and black flat design. It's really nice, the typography is really brilliant, and it actually comes with a few features of its own. Say for example that you scheduled to have pizza with a few friends, you just drag down and you can type out pizza, and it will give you multiple locations of pizza that are around your area. And if you need one that's by driving time or walking time, then it will actually give you that extra time in your day to actually give you time to walk there. So that way you don't have to set yourself a reminder, you just go when it tells you to, which is really, really nice. Maps for Mac OS X Mavericks. This is a big area and one that we all saw coming. This is typically like Apple Maps on the iPhone or the iPad. You have your satellite view, your street view, and your hybrid view. Flyover, of course, comes standard, obviously. So you can see large panoramic cities in 3D, which is absolutely brilliant, by the way. Of course, it also assists you in live traffic, which on a desktop app, believe it or not, is incredibly helpful because you can see so much more. And of course you can have access to information on different locations by pulling up an address, say you want to find the Baltimore Aquarium or the Inner Harbor that's not too far from here. Then you just pull that up, you get an information card including phone numbers and addresses and all that. And since this is a Mac, 
you can actually drag the card off of the application and store it on your desktop for later, which is incredibly helpful. And of course, once you've found a route to your destination, you can send that route directly to your iPhone, which can have a huge benefit so that way you don't have to worry about whether it's the fastest route or not. But of course, like we're all thinking, this is Apple Maps and they they have a bit of a track record. I'm not saying that these are going to be a repeat of last year's Apple Maps, but I'm just saying be cautious if you're heading to a Starbucks and it's in the middle of the ocean. And finally, the last thing is iBooks for Mac. However, though, I didn't actually get a chance to have this feature on my Mac because it wasn't exactly put on yet. So I'm not sure, but from what I can see at the presentation, it definitely looks like a really interesting prospect. However, though, I wouldn't exactly recommend reading uh, your iMac in your bed uh, as a bedtime story because something about it just doesn't seem quite right. Although if you have something like a MacBook Air or a 13 inch MacBook Pro, it definitely seems like something that could definitely be taken advantage of and would be really good, especially for a college student like myself. Anyway guys, from what I can tell from the hands-on demo, this beta has a long way to go. In my mind, it's nothing too terrible, but it's just really, really slow, and which is kind of ironic because the point of this was actually to bring up the speeds on across all Macs. So obviously, one fact is that it's a beta, another fact is that I was running it off a bootable drive. So anyway, that was probably it and I cannot wait to see what the later betas have to offer. So anyway guys, that is my video on Mac OS X Mavericks. Make sure you leave me any comments down below if you have any questions for me. Also make sure you give this video a thumbs up, and of course, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe by hitting that big red button or whichever kind of button it is now. Anyway guys, I've been Connor Mitchell, and I will catch you guys at the next video. Talk to you then.